Before we can start the planking, there are certain pieces that we need to deal with, and the hatches would certainly be the, the first part. This morning, we're going to be putting the grills and fitting them into the combings, and they are a bit different from uh, those on the lower deck. These 3D renderings um, from Admiralty models really um, show the details that we would never see um, as explained in the book and really are fantastic. So to make up the combings, we follow very much the way the combings were made up on the lower deck, uh, except that these are quite a bit taller. They are actually 10 inches um, high or tall of the, um, the deck and uh, seven inches wide. You will notice on the port and starboard side of the combings, there's a ledge which prevents the gra grating from falling through. We've decided we're going to add this afterwards with a little strip of wood. It's just too difficult um, a recess to cut at this point. The sides are also tapered um, and you need to make a mark of two inches on the top of the combing and then go on to some sort of sanding machine um, to put this taper in. I have determined that the, um, the angle is 12 and a half degrees, so you set the, um, the square on the machine to cater for that and gently put it in. And you have to remember that you need to leave a three inch space at the bottom, um, which is where the, um, the floorboards uh, will, will butt against the frame. Um, you could choose to put a three inch line on the frame. Um, there's no harm in doing that. I've done it by eye. I, I had one, one mark and now I've grown accustomed to exactly where, where it is. If you follow the line that you established, um, the two inch line on the top of the frame, you'll find that it'll settle actually in the right spot. Remember that again, unlike the frames on the lower deck, um, the camber has to be sanded into these pieces. And I did this with a piece of sandpaper stuck to some old um, beams and it really made up um, a, a perfect sanding board. Now we need to round the edge. And this was developed when we were doing the uh, frames on the, on the lower deck and it just puts a nice round um, on the edge of the frame while leaving the bottom part um, square to meet the, the uh, deck boards. Once that's done, we need to move to put a little piece of wood to prevent the grating from falling out of the frame. Um, on the lower deck um, gratings, we stuck everything in um, I've decided that these are going to be able to move in and out. So it was a simple process of cutting pieces to fit using PVA to put them in place, stick them flat um, so that they're, they're sitting down flat on, in my case, on the bench. Um, leave the PVA to set for about, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes so that it'll actually attach to the side of the frame, the inner side of the frame, and then push the, the gratings out. Um, otherwise, you will get some spill off of the PVA glue and um, it could stick inside there and then you won't be able to take them out or you might break it or damage it when you try to take them out. This was actually my third attempt to complete these um, gratings. Um, <laughs> you know my history. Um, full of errors, reading the book, perhaps not paying attention to certain matters. But again, I can just stress, please read the book two or three times, write notes about it, and you won't make the errors. Another little trick, um, just a technique to make sure that you put the grills back in the exact same way. You'll notice at the top right hand corner, 
of each of these grills is a little pencil mark. Um, and again, all that does is make sure that you line up the grill um, the same way the frame was made. Um, now, in a perfect world, if it was 100% square, it wouldn't matter. But we don't live in a perfect world. Now comes the real test, which is to make it, make the main jib it pin fit through the frame. And we'll see how accurate we were. Um, I'm sure this is going to give me lots of challenges, a um, lot of patience. And of course, if you screw it up, you'll simply make another one and then make another one till you get it right. Um, so here we are fitting the grill. We've fitted the frame, we've made some adjustments, and I have to say, I'm surprised that it's fit on the first time. In the world of 3D, this is what it looks like. I really wish mine um, looked as good, um, but 3D will probably always be better than a reality. Um, so here she is. Um, space maybe a little bit too fat but that's how it'll have to be now we'll go to a finishing um, cleaning up um, looking for little mistakes in the squares in some of the greetings um, really just taking our time using some rub on poly um, and I haven't termitrated this piece yet the pieces yet I've um, been searching and trying to figure out what um, color I'm going to paint the, the greetings in. Um, David gives us in chapter 8 three options, red as we did with the frames um, on the lower floor, on the lower deck, um, black which might have been appropriate um, for a, a, a greeting that's subject to a lot of abuse somewhere. Uh, or painted in natural colors. Um, although I would love, I really would love to use um, red because it just brings up um, parts of the model and, and makes them scream out of you. Um, I'm gonna guess that they would have been actually painted in natural colors and you'd see the natural wood come out. So that's what I'm gonna do. You'll also notice that um, the gratings are broken into two or three pieces. Um, I could do that um, on the saw. I could also just simulate it by putting a line on it. Um, but the truth is, it's so small, I don't think anybody's going to see it. And so I'm, at this point in time, not going to do anything about that. No shortage of problems. Um, I noticed that this um, block um, is too low and um, I need to take this out and redo it. So I've loosened it up, but it won't come out. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to cut this out. <laughs> uh, those. never ends does it 
Um, anyway, it's not a big, it's not a big uh, rebuild. Um, but boy, <laughs> it really is a, a learning process. Thank goodness for the 3D um, photographs, which really um, bring so much perspective to this and get me to understand the words that David has, David has written, but that the pictures clarify um, so many things. So let's take a look at the details. So I've done the drawing out. This is probably the fifth time I've done this. But I think I've finally got an understanding of where everything goes. Um, let's just start with the, um, the bit cross piece. Um, that clearly is from the, from the top of the bit cross piece to the, um, to the deck is 21 inches. The cross bit piece is four and a half inches, which means the space between the bottom of the bit cross piece and the deck is 16 and a half inches. From that, the slot to take the sheave hole um, would have had to be eight inches because the actual sheave is seven and a half inches in diameter and you'd need a little bit on either side of it. So I'm assuming that that's eight inches. And that would leave four and a quarter inches between the top of the sheave slot and the bit cross piece and the bottom of the sheave and the deck. And so now I have a much better perspective of how this is. This little edge, in fact, if you look at one of the photographs, goes right to the bottom of the bit cross piece. Um, I've also got to understand a little bit more about these fittings for the, uh, the pump brake rodents, which are two um, holes drilled. Again, the book gives you the actual measurement. Um, and these are to hold a bearing um, that um, cater for the, the crank. So I think this really is it. All the numbers are correct. I will now remake the bit pins, even though I have actually made them up already. Um, uh, a second set, I'll make up a third set. And um, the only thing left is this tapered piece at the top which is not shown in the drawing, and I really don't know how to how to make that piece. So I'm going to write Greg and see what advice he gives me. That tapered piece is above him. And I've just left this for you to, with no, nothing to confuse you. Um, if you feel there was an error made, feel free to, to contact me. And now we're just remaking the piece. Um, first on the Preac, then on the Sherline. Um, it's really the perfect machine to do all this fine drilling and accurate drilling. Um, and then once that's all done and everything lines up and checks back, I go back to the workbench and start sticking everything up. Again, using PVA, who knows? <laughs> I might have to take these apart again, you never know. Um, and the... Cheek blocks, um, I keep getting better and better at making these blocks. This is a bulk piece, actually made three, so I have a spare one. And, you know, the more the, the, you make up these pieces, the better you get at it and the higher the quality of the piece. So the truth is, there's nothing wrong with correcting these mistakes because um, the skill level just keeps getting better and better.
So there we have it. That turned out to be quite a doozy. I'm sure based on the history of this build that um, I'll have a few more interesting surprises like this. Um, but again, I, I stress that um, that's part and parcel of the, of the nature. This build is all about a learning process, understanding the sequence of the, thi of the things. Um, your sins of the past will come back and haunt you in the future. Um, so we really need to, to take, a, take our time when we're doing these things and, and to try and, and really write out um, all, all of the processes and, um, because we don't have the ability to discuss this with Greg or David. Um, again, I'd, I'd, I'd again like to, to congratulate them. And those, 3D, those 3D drawings um, really have changed my whole life in terms of the approach to build and have shortened the learning curve um, and, and made it so much easier to understand um, what what David has written in, in, in the book. So we'll complete this video here and start um, on the planking, starting with the king plank um, in the next video. So we'll see you and again, keep modeling.